May 7th, 1999, a day that will live in infamy. It was on that day that then-Chancellor Gordon Brown announced to the world that he would be selling more than half of the nation's gold supply. This decision by Brown to sell the nation's gold came after a 20-year bear market in gold. The price had peaked in 1980 at around $800, and Brown was selling it at 254 at a price that has now become legendary as Brown's bottom. With the price of gold sailing through $1,000 per ounce, Brown's bottom was becoming an enormous issue. This grave mistiming of the market was costing Great Britain more and more every day. I went to speak to the Shadow Treasury Secretary, Philip Hammond. Tell us then about Brown's bottom. I think there are two separate questions here. One is um, whether the timing of the transactions was inept and whether advice uh, on that was properly taken and, and, and if it was taken, whether it was then uh, ignored. And the second one is whether the way in which these gold sales were announced and, and handled actually created the low. In other words, whether Brown's bottom was actually a bottom of Brown's creation mm. rather than just a coincidental sale of our gold at the worst possible moment. So it was an auction that took place? It was an auction. It was a series of auctions that took place. Yeah. And so the market was alerted that Britain was in the process of selling this enormous position? The, the market was alerted uh, initially, I think, to a 150 tonne sale and then subsequent sales were announced afterwards and they were made in tranches within that uh, of about 800,000 ounces. So on Wall the Street, the terminology here, if one wanted to take advantage of this, would be front running. Yeah. So in other words, orders are put in place ahead of the market because you know there's a huge sell order coming and you can make a profit on the fact that there's this huge sale order coming from Britain. And this, in fact, cas has a cascading effect, even lowering the price to lower and lower levels. And the concern in this country, and it becomes a bigger concern as the gold price rises, is that we've given away perhaps four billion pounds, seven or eight billion dollars worth of value by the mistiming of these gold sales. So this is an issue uh, not, of, not of the strategy that was adopted, but of the economic competence that was displayed in executing that strategy. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, ask the question, what would happen to a trader or a strategist in a major bank who decided to dispose of an asset, but then disposed of it at the very bottom of the market, the answer is he probably wouldn't have had uh, a glittering career, uh, as Gordon Brown has gone on to do. And you're talking eight or nine billion dollars in lost opportunity costs by the sale of the gold. Now in gold we're talking tons of course, so how many tons did he sell? We're talking about just under 400 tons that was sold over that period. And what percentage of Britain's gold reserve did that represent? I think that represented about half of the gold that we had in our reserves at that time. And the price looking back is a multi-decade low. Uh, it's, it's, it was around I think an average of $250. A multi-decade low. Where we're looking, that's right, where we're looking at a, at a price now touching $1,000. So it has this legendary moniker in the markets and trading jargon as Brown's bottom. Yeah. Who are these people who advise them on this decision? Well, I have no idea where, who, who were the advisors on the gold sales, but even uh, we read uh, internally within the Bank of England, uh, there were senior officials who were uncomfortable uh, with the decision to proceed with these gold sales in the way that they uh, occurred. So what was the rush? Uh, I have no idea what the rush was. This was a decision Gordon Brown made. Um, I have to say, and it, I accept it's easy to say this with the benefit of hindsight, but I have to say that if the decision was made that for strategic reasons the balance of the portfolio needed to be changed, uh, then one would expect that a long time period would be allowed for that to happen, given that these are quite significant volumes of gold in relation to the world's traded market, um, and th that expert advice would be followed about how to uh, maximize the value of the strategy that should be used in order to maximize the value of those sales. That's what you'd expect an investment bank to do. That's what a private client would do uh, if it was his own wealth. And I think the public are beginning to ask whether there's been uh, just a little bit of um, uh, uh, negligence in the way that their money, their value has been handled and this government has failed to get value for taxpayers. What's the worst case scenario? That the decision was made hastily without proper expert advice? I guess the worst case scenario is that something other than achieving the best price in the market was driving the process. If there was any uh, political agenda driving the process, any um, any any non uh, purely commercial uh, part of the agenda because that's the kind of uh, thing that would would make people very angry remember this was at around the time of the birth of the euro 
and 40% of the proceeds of these sales went into euro-denominated assets. The euro is a uh, highly controversial political issue in, uh, in the UK, and I think that's one of the issues that people were uncomfortable with around the time, that it looked as though the timing of this decision may have been related to a desire to show support for the nascent euro right. without taking the politically unpalatable step of joining it. Right. Brown is pro-euro. Well, Blair yeah. was pro-euro. Bla Blair was pro-euro, excuse me. At the time of Gordon Brown's gold sales, the U.S. Fed chairman Alan Greenspan warned him, quote, Germany in 1944 could buy materials during the war only with gold. Fiat money paper in extremis is accepted by nobody. Gold is always accepted, end quote. If Germany was the expert in extremist events, I would go directly to the Bundesbank in Frankfurt. Little did I know that on that very day, Bear Stearns had collapsed, interest rates had been slashed, and gold was skyrocketing. You know, we're waiting to see somebody at the Bundesbank, and um, we've been told that they're now in lockdown mode. There's a crisis. They're on effectively red alert. Uh, they're afraid of uh, talking to anybody because uh, of sensitivities in this global market meltdown. It's quite remarkable, really. You know, we made the case that maybe they should be talking to the press. Uh, they were told, we were told, that uh, the situation is much too sensitive. No, we didn't stop talking to the press, but only in situations like today. No? The, the fear is that the banking system itself is mm -hmm. in peril. That is a question, yeah. That's a question. That's in America, that's in Germany, that's, you know. Right. But you don't know. Actually, now you don't know what's what's going on. No? Up to now, I mean, you, you don't really know what, what's coming, no? what's coming next. Well, gold is still the ultimate uh, reserve currency, if you like, the ultimate store of value. And I suppose in, in an extremist, in the worst emergency, it is something that will always remain universally acceptable. It's not a promissory note. It doesn't depend on someone else living up to their obligations. It is a value in its own right. We're leaving the Bundesbank. Uh, the most fascinating thing I learned is that all the gold in Germany is in New York. The question is whether the execution of the policy has displayed the level of competence that we expect of our government in the management of our monetary and uh, exchange policies and, and indeed the custody of our, of our wealth because this is the British people's wealth. Admiral Nelson, he expanded the wealth of this nation and then Gordon Brown seems to have sold a lot of it away. Is there a plinth in Trafalgar Square waiting for Brown's bottom? I hope there won't be any statue of Gordon Brown in Trafalgar Square at any stage. Uh, but I think you're right. As the price of gold rises, the public interest in this issue and the political focus on it is increasing. Uh, and the, 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 the fact that we've sold a large amount of our foreign reserves at the rock bottom price, uh, as you say, a two-decade low, um, is coming back to haunt Gordon Brown.